I'm rolling XZ 5.6.1. And I'm not affected by the old XZ backdoor. But you're thinking, hey, Titus, isn't every YouTuber going 5.6.1? It's the devil. It's got the back door. Well, I gotta tell you. Come at me, Giatan. You got nothing. I'm an arch user. I'll get into why I'm not affected, but I actually want to actually talk about this because there's so much misinformation going around, and I see a lot of people sensationalizing the XZ backdoor going, everyone in the Linux, whole Linux environment's completely infected. Oh my gosh, everybody's going to get backdoored. I'm like, no, man, come on. This isn't like some YMCA concert. Don't worry. It's fine. Not that many people are infected. So let's just get into it, right? Let's just see here. You know, let's 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 just talk about who's affected, not waste any time. RPM and deb packages is who it affects because it links directly to SSH because of the implementation of the virus was in something called the lib LZMA package and how that gets linked with SSH logins and other things. We'll get into actually how this could be executed and why it's really not that big a deal uh, for the most part. But Fedora-based distributions in Fedora. It's a Red Hat d distribution, and uh, it's like the bleeding edge. You really only see this. More desktop users use it. Like one of my favorite like gaming distros is Nabara, and it's a Fedora-based distro. It would also be affected by this. Uh, but, I mean, honestly, I dropped all use of Red Hat after all the drama from 2023. And my view on this is, honestly, if, uh, you know, the XZ backdoor didn't get you as Fedora, Red Hat's going to probably backdoor you tomorrow, you know? <laughs> In one way or another. You know, uh, they'll probably close source something. And, oh, man, don't get me started. I'm still salty about Red Hat. I apologize. But let's move on to Sousa. SUSE, a lot of implementations of SUSE is usually like the leap or the stable version of SUSE. Uh, Tumbleweed Micro OS is used a lot in some instances. It has a fan following or a niche fan following, and those versions were affected. There is already an update available for that. So, you know, there's that. Debian, one of my favorite distros, is affected if you're running Unstable or SID. Very few people run on un un Unstable or SID or even testing. Most people that like Debian like stable because if you're more of an unstable kind of guy you typically are rolling like an arch linux type deal so not really that big a deal most people aren't affected here and honestly i think it already has an update available if you just do an apt update you'll probably be fine and then you got kali linux which yeah, you know i already called it a pointless distro back in my tier list <laughs> pissed off some security researchers but I feel pretty vindicated after saying that it was one of the affected spins of Debian. Anyways, it, it has an update now. You can update that if you so choose. And then Arch, not affected because it never linked lib LZMA to SSH. You're like, Titus, how do you know this? Because I read. <laughs> uh, just going to the security advisory. Just get it from the horse's mouth. Don't trust YouTubers. Don't trust me. Don't trust anybody you watch on this platform. Shady things are afoot. <laughs> but honestly, just read uh, read the thing. You can see right here. The malicious code path does not exist in any Arch version because SSHD does not link to lib LZMA. But out of abundance of caution, there is updates. Anything from uh, XZ 5.6.1-1. Two and above is fine. So, see this? Yeah, it's the version I'm using, and that's not affected. Uh, if I had dash one, it would have the malicious code, but it wouldn't do anything. And that kind of brings me to how all this happened. Like, we could go into the social engineering thing, but people have done 20 minute videos on this, and I've sat through a couple of them, and I'm like, some of them, and I'm like, ah, I get it. But the gist of it is be nice to your open source maintainers. Don't demand fixes for things. These guys are amazing. They're rock stars to do this out of the kindness of their heart. But also double check stuff <laughs> as much as you can. This was really sneaky, though, when you actually looked at how it was designed and implemented. It was kind of wild. But I left a little uh, guide on how the whole social engineering happened in this 
Jiatan, bad actor that made this, he spent years building up trust with the main maintainer of XZ, and then he slipped this in here on a commit. And it was kind of really shady how it happened, but also shows the importance. So, you know, show some love to your open source community out here. And if you want to read more on the social engineering, check out this article. Uh, I thought that was pretty good. As far as the summary itself, I kind of left a quick summary on how it was orchestrated. But again, the gist of it is a private key made by this Gia 10 fellow could implement or, or basically get into your system as root through SSH and do whatever it wanted, right? Well, yes, but it also requires you to expose SSH, which you should not ever be doing. And, you know, that's one thing I have to say is, guys, uh, somebody was talking to me on stream about this, and I was like, never, ever expose SSH under any circumstance. I understand most people don't use password, or you really, really shouldn't these days, or any kind of like tar pitting like back in the day, but... Even SSH keys, obviously, with vulnerabilities like this and other things out there, you don't ever really even want to give up that port. It is the most attacked port on the internet, and it's not something I would ever expose in the business or my personal setup here at the house. So uh, just, just a word of warning here, but that's how it was carried out. That's how the backdoor happens. By no means, even if you had the exploited code, should you ever expose this, but even if you did... Again, it's everything would have to line up perfectly. And most people are overblowing this saying Linux is hacked. Oh my God, everything's backdoored in Linux now because of this one package. And, and it's just not the truth at all. And very, very few people were affected by it. And those that were probably weren't exposing SSH. They really shouldn't have been. And almost none of them were businesses. And if you were a business affected by this, fire your IT guy because that guy doesn't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but a big shout out to the guy that found it, which is Andres. Thank you. He's a Postgres developer. He's very passionate about fixing this stuff. Big shout out to him. Great. I, I'm sorry that everyone's just refer, referring to him as the Microsoft engineer in articles. That's terrible. I'm sorry, man. I apologize for the community as a whole and just say thank you for your work. Thank you for exposing this and submitting it through official channels so it never did become widespread. And that's the big thing here. It never did get widespread. Please, 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 other YouTubers, stop saying it's everywhere and everybody's infected. Just read the articles and look, make decisions, update your systems if you need, uh, but chances are you're on a stable version of Linux, so you don't even need to do that if you don't want to. And with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. This was a fun one. I really, really enjoyed covering it. Uh, but I know I'm a bit late to the party and I didn't want to cover it at all. But then after seeing all the other people make videos, I was like, yeah, seems like everybody kind of has some bad takes on this one. I guess uh, I guess I'll be the voice of reason. The the guy that called Kali Linux pointless is going to be the guy that's uh, the voice of reason on this one. <laughs> Anyways, have a good one all. Peace.